The next place in Peru I wanted to go to to check out whether there's evidence of ancient technology was a beautiful little town called Chinchero. I wanted to find this in particular and this. Both of these were used as examples online of ancient technology, but are they? Let's look at what ended up being the top five mysterious things I saw in Chinchero, Peru. Number one, the snake lines. I love Brian Forster's work, but if this is the exact spot he was talking about, this is not ancient technology because I asked the locals and they said that the stones are Incan, but the, the actual stuff that the snake lines are in is colonial. So this is modern. Number two, the square. What's so mysterious about this? This is about 68 inches by 75 inches by 36 inches. Think about the logistics of removing 108 cubic feet of rock by pounding stone on stone, which is how we're told they did it. That's 108 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch cubes of rock. Each cubic foot of rock weighs 100 pounds. That means 10,800 pounds of rock was removed from there. Are we sure they didn't have an easier way? Which leads me to number three, the terraces. We're supposed to believe that these beautiful stepped terraces that you see all over Peru are done by people that don't have dishwashers or wash machines and have to grow all their own food and make all their own clothing. They're slowly beating this stuff out in their spare time for fun. I mean, it's, there's just a seemingly no purpose to these things. There's just way too many of them. So this guy said that the uh quarry is about three hours away where they got the rocks for the walls and that this stuff is for ceremonies. I don't know if I buy that but that's what he said. The reason why I don't buy that they're for ceremonies is I mean look at this. Do you really think that they were setting their mummies on this? I mean what are they putting candles on here? Um, I mean it just doesn't make sense. They're too narrow. They're not very pretty, they're not well formed, they're not practical. There's just, it, to me it looks like they were quarrying something because you'd find them in the oddest places on the, you know, around corners and back sides of rocks. They came in different heights and, and widths, literally in places where there was absolutely no purpose. And, and like this little thing on the back side, what they just felt like having a little one here with a little ledge that isn't wide enough to put anything on. Why would you spend your time doing this? Unless, it was easy because no one's going to be saying, oh, honey, I'm bored. Can I go spend the next couple of hours just pounding away for fun out on my, you know, my little rock playground? Which brings me to number four, large excavations. A primitive people build shelters and maybe a few spots for their mummies. But are these shelters? Let me show you a few different ones. On the back side of that rock was an area that had been excavated, but this represented an enormous massive amount of work. This was a large area, but if it was shelter, why wasn't it deep enough to really be used? And what is this ledge all along the front? I mean, decoration? Why would you be working on decorations when it's at this point not even deep enough to really lay in lengthwise and have it be usable for, again, shelter? So backing up to give you a little bit better perspective, it just doesn't seem like it makes sense. And again, a ledge deep at the bottom, barely wide enough at the top. I mean, certainly not wide enough to like shelter, you know, your mummy or whatever. This doesn't make sense either. I get it if they wanted to make a nice pretty little spot where the waterfall is, but here's more cut marks on the bottom side. I mean, nice, nice cut. I mean, nice lines. Why would you bother doing it that height? If you're trying to do something to shelter yourself, why not go a little bit taller? And why is there, again, that same that same ridge there. Let's finish on is Chinchero megalithic? In other words, is it worth coming and visiting? People tend to avoid Chinchero, I think, because it doesn't seem as grand as Cusco and Ollante Tambo. But there's some interesting things about the stones of Chinchero that make it worth visiting besides its beauty. One thing I was looking for was whether they were softening stone like I'd seen in Ollante Tambo and Cusco. And if you look closely, you do see that some of them are smooth and very tightly fit together. But either this is a different type of rock or a weather is much differently here because there was definitely roughness to a lot of the stones. So again, there were some areas that were smooth, but in general, it looked like a lot of them had weathered in a very, very rough way or had never been smoothed completely like to the extent they were in Cusco. And then in other places, again, it looked like either they were nice on bottom and they didn't finish the top ones or else somebody built on top of them using a slightly different style. 
When I got to the terraces, I noticed there was a fair difference in size. There was smaller stuff, and yes, there was megalithic. Nothing more than maybe four feet tall. But in general, they were kind of a medium-sized stone. And at first, they gave the impression that, oh, you know, let's just put the wall together. Let's make it work. Just fit whatever will fit next to each other and be done with it. But that is definitely not the case. These, believe it or not, are every bit as complicated as the ones in Cusco. There's ones with seven or more sides, and they fit just as tightly together. But there's two problems. There's either weathering taking place, or they never finished them on the front the way they did in other places. So if you look closely at the cracks, what you're seeing is actually just dirt and moss that's between them. They fit together every bit as tight as they did in Cusco. And one odd thing I noticed that was in some areas, the rocks had scrape marks on them. Look at this. There are scrape marks all over those stones. I should have hunted somebody up and tried to find out, you know, again, is this just a newer area or what this is? So if you go there, be sure to check this out and ask about this. So the rocks are mysterious and worth investigating more because even though many of them were not as smooth on the front like we saw in Cusco and Machu Picchu, I believe that the moss and dirt were taken away. They may be every bit as closely fit together as what we saw in Cusco and Machu Picchu. This was nine one hundredths of a millimeter and you literally couldn't get it in between it and that's, again, Machu Picchu. And here at Chinchero you could see the same thing, but just not everywhere. So is there definitive proof that there's ancient technology in Peru? Well, maybe not definitive. And as usual, I'm gonna go away from an area without all the answers I'd like because Peru doesn't give up its mysteries easy. But I think it's reasonably safe to say there wasn't a bunch of people afflicted with the same predisposition to making terraces by banging rocks together.